perhaps this lazy fair approach to their customers tells a much deeper concerning story about how the company itself functions. Well, listening to that is C.K. Golding. He's the founder of Icons and Machines PR in Sheffield. Good afternoon to you. Thank you so much for joining us. So, I mean, what's your initial reaction to this? Do you think it's uh, caused constant or or irreparable damage to the relationship between Yorkshire Water and the customers? Hey, Ellie, no. Absolutely not. I don't think it's caused irreparable damage because in the greatest scheme of things, I would characterize this as a blunder at best and a misstep at worst. And, you know, usually with corporate communications, one thing that a company has to do amid a crisis is define whether or not this is low, medium or high in terms of the potential damage it's going to do moving forward. And as Fergal mentioned in his piece a moment ago, like, you know, once you move past the mild amusement, and I think they were the two key words there, mild amusement, and you dropped a little pun a moment ago, Ellie, as you moved into your package when you said Yorkshire water in something of hot water. You know, I think generally speaking, this is just a laughable error as far as they're concerned. They have bigger issues to concern themselves with, including the sewage, the debt, the fines and so on. Do you think, given the the fact that they haven't had the bre- best press recently, that some customers or, or even people that aren't necessarily involved with Yorkshire Water might not see the funny side? Do you think that's a possibility? You know what? You're absolutely right, and that's the interesting thing. And there is a caveat to everything I just said there. And even John Kay, I think it was John Kay mentioned it, you know, it was only three weeks ago that they had to apologise for the dumping of sewage. And... <laughs> I'm not a big fan of how Yorkshire Water have handled this, to be honest with you, because, all right, let me ask you a question, Ellie. When you heard about this video, was the first thing you did go onto one of their social media websites to see whether they've referenced it, apologised for it, explained it? Have you done that yet today? Yeah. Yeah, it was the first thing I did. And I would argue it's probably the first thing most people do because we're quite keen to gauge why something of this nature could happen. And usually the best way to explain it is via a pinned tweet on Twitter or a pinned post on Facebook or or, or something on Instagram. The fact they've done none of those three things is very surprising to me because all that's going to happen is that people's discontent will just roll on. And I would have personally recommended they do actually explain it very quickly and very swiftly and apologise to a certain degree as well. And just out of interest, as somebody who, of course, works in PR, but you are the founder, founder of Icons and Machines, we love that. So you're the top man, CK Golding, we love that. Why would they use stock footage? Is that a common thing in promotional campaigns? Yeah, very much so. Very common, especially if you're releasing a lot of content. I have no issue with them. I have no issue with them or anybody else using stock footage because it's just very convenient and it's very efficient when you want to get messages out there. What I find a little bit surprising is that I assume whoever was creating that piece of content, that video, would have. I assume their search term would have been Yorkshire landscapes. So I'm not quite sure how they ended up with Herefordshire landscapes. And I also assume that they've typed Yorkshire entertainment, Yorkshire pubs, Yorkshire bars. So the fact that it was a Russian bar of all the places in the world to associate yourself with at the moment, I would argue Russia is the least advisable. So that was odd. So there's mm-hmm. a lot of oddities in this, to be honest with you, but to answer your question directly, I have no issue with using stock video, stock content. That's just efficient for a company. And just, just finally... That checks, that checks yeah. need work. Yeah, and how would you imagine that they're going to get out of this now, Yorkshire War? I think you mentioned before about them actually coming out and saying, you look, sorry, we've really got this wrong release in a statement or something. What would you recommend? I, I believe they have done that. They have done that officially, which was referenced in the BBC package earlier, but mm-hmm. the official statement, and there needs to be a statement on the touch points that the average customer is going to use, and the average touch point a customer will use, as mentioned earlier, will be Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, so the fact yeah. they've not got anything on there is baffling to me. Moving forward in terms of, I, I, I suspect, and I know that their key message is the fact that they've invested £180 million over the next two years to reduce sewage leaks. And that is ultimately what they're going to want us to focus on. So all statements, I can guarantee, will reference that particular key message, which isn't a bad message, but there's also a part of it that thinks, well, why are you leaking sewage in the first place? 
Thank you so much there to CK Golding. He's the founder of Icons and Machines PR in Sheffield. So like I referenced before, they have come out and given a statement and apologised, but it's posting it online so the customers can see it Lately as well. I've been living in a dream. The past feels like a better place to be.